Okay, uh, 3.25, we are given a Hamiltonian, which is defined in terms of two orthonormal basis vectors, one and two. So this means that this is a 2D system, right? Uh, and epsilon is just some arbitrary number that has dimensions of energy. We're told to find the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and also find the matrix A, H, that represents this operator for the Hamiltonian with respect to this basis. Um, so immediately, right, we know that since this is defined, this entire system can, can be defined with two vectors. This means that this is a two by two matrix. So you have H11, H12, H21, H22. And from here, uh, literally from our last problem, right, we figured out how to find the individual elements of a matrix by breaking it into an inner product with the actual uh, basis vectors. So we know that H11 is going to equal taking the H uh, operator and sandwiching it in between the eigen, eigen uh, sorry, not the eigen, the orthonormal basis one and one to get element one one. So like this, in which case this is going to be the cat or the bra of one. And then let's write this in red, epsilon multiplied by cat one bra one minus cat or cat two bra two plus cat one bra two plus cat two bra one like that. I'm acting this on cat one like this. So immediately I can pull out the epsilon. And then now what I have left is pretty much just so I would distribute this ket1 into my equation in here in red. So this is going to give me one and then one with itself, right? Minus two, two inner product with one plus one, whoops, plus one inner product with, or plus one times inner product of two with one plus two, and then inner product of one with one. And from that, well, instantly, right, because of the fact that this is an orthonormal basis, uh, if I'm taking inner product of two vectors that are orthogonal, they're automatically going to equal zero. So that becomes zero, that becomes zero. What I'm left with is epsilon one. And then now the orthonormal basis inner product with itself is just going to give me one because it's normalized. So ket one plus ket two, just like that. In which case, well, one inner product with two automatically goes to zero. So I'm left with just one ket with itself, which means that this first term is equal to epsilon. And we're just going to do that again for one, two. So this is going to be sandwich between inner product of one and two. This is gonna be one, and then this entire thing again. So I'm just gonna copy paste that. Move it into here. Next, this time a two at the front, which means immediately that, you know, if I'm taking inner products, right, instantly this goes to zero, instantly this goes to zero, I'm left with one, and then the epsilon term, and then let's see, two with itself goes to zero, so negative ket two plus ket one. Move the epsilon out, right? One with two instantly goes to zero, you're left with one, 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 it's just epsilon again. Okay, next h21. This is gonna be two with h with one, like that. Once again, Expanding H is going to give me two at the front this time, and then the same epsilon term, and then a one at the end. Right? The epsilon comes out, then I have a two, and then from here, inner products, right? Two and one go to zero, two and one go to zero. This is left with one plus two, like that. Two and one go to zero, so I'm left with two and two. This is once again going to equal epsilon. And finally, H22, this is going to be 2H inner product with 2 
which is going to give me once again the same exact thing in the middle this time with two on both left and right side like that so at this point uh, same thing pull out the epsilon bra 2 and then this term goes to nothing uh, this term goes to nothing so negative 2 plus 1 like that okay and then in that case this point this term goes to nothing because once again it's an inner product of two orthonormal vectors which leaves you with negative epsilon so that means that my h vector as a whole is going to equal epsilon 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 negative epsilon and that's the first part of this problem right now that we actually have the actual matrix that represents this operator for the Hamiltonian. We can just find the energy eigenvalues uh, and also the eigenvectors via just the standard eigenvalue problem, right? So I have that H operating on my state vector is gonna give me the energy of the system times that same state vector, which means that if I move it over, solve it as a determinant system, right? Then I'm gonna get determinant of H minus E times identity on S is going to equal zero, aka determinant epsilon minus the energy times epsilon times epsilon times negative epsilon minus the energy is going to equal zero. Okay, so then at this point, solving the determinant equation, right, I'm going to get epsilon minus E times negative epsilon minus E and this is gonna be minus epsilon squared is gonna equal zero, negative epsilon squared minus epsilon times e uh, plus epsilon times e plus e squared minus epsilon squared is equal to zero or negative two epsilon squared. These two terms cancel out plus e squared is equal to zero in which case e squared is equal to 2 times epsilon squared, which means that e is equal to plus minus root 2 multiplied by epsilon. Uh, okay, so this is my energy eigenvalues. And at this point, I can just plug this in and find the actual eigenvectors, right? So I have that h uh, minus e i times the vector. And you know, I just realized that this thing right here I, writ I wrote incorrectly. It's supposed to be the vector h minus ei times vector s, or matrix h minus ei times vector s is equal to zero, which means that the determinant of this matrix has to equal zero. So that's my apology for uh, writing that incorrectly. But, and I have this equation, this is gonna equal zero. So now let's try it for my two uh, energy eigenvalues. So if e is equal to epsilon root two, in that case, what I get is uh, epsilon minus epsilon root 2, epsilon, epsilon, and then negative epsilon minus epsilon root 2, like that. And this times the vector, I'm going to call it psi plus, psi plus 1, psi plus 2, it's going to equal 0. right? So if I write this out, right, it's a 2 by 2 matrix, so I could just write out one of the equations and just solve that. Uh, I can say that this first row times this first column is going to give me epsilon minus epsilon root 2 psi 1 plus epsilon psi 2 is equal to 0. From this point, I can factor out all the epsilons and then isolate psi 2, which means that psi 2 is going to equal root 2 minus 1 psi 1. And from this point, I can then say, okay, this is going to be psi 1 and then root 2 minus 1 psi 1. Psi 1 is going to be the variable here, in which case I can have it equal anything, in which the simplest case is just to have it equal 1. So this means that this vector, psi plus, is going to equal 1 root 2 minus 1. Okay, now let's do E equals negative epsilon root 2, right? So for this case, I just have to reverse the signs. I'm going to have, whoa, epsilon, this time plus epsilon root 2, then epsilon, then epsilon, then 
uh, negative epsilon plus epsilon root 2. I'm going to call this vector psi minus. Okay, at this point, same song and dance, right? So epsilon plus epsilon root 2 times psi 1, or psi minus 1, uh, plus epsilon psi minus 2 is equal to 0. Take out the epsilons, that means that psi minus 2 is going to equal negative epsilon, or sorry, negative 1 minus root 2 times psi minus 1, in which case my psi minus vector is going to equal psi minus 1, and then negative 1 minus root 2, psi minus 1, in which case psi minus 1 is my variable, it can equal anything I want. For simplicity, I make it equal to 1, in which case this is going to be 1, negative 1, minus root 2. And with that, we are done with this problem.